Hello. We left off here, and we're going to put an inventory over here. We're going to display an inventory. Now, popping up an inventory display should be something you know how to do. So you can just go ahead and do that. You can tell the equipment screen to pop it up if you'd like, um, or you can do it some other way. It doesn't matter, because no matter how you pop it into existence, we've already signed up for the events. So any inventory screen that you put up on this page will automatically feed into the equipment. It's that easy. We've already set it all up. All you need to do is pop the inventory display into existence. The question is, what inventory are you going to pass to your inventory display? Well, that is an iffy situation because there is no right answer. For example, this is an equipment screen, but you can use this same stuff on the left. You click something on the right happens. You can use that same setup for a lot of stuff. You might be picking a block out of a list of every single block in the game. You might be picking out a list of your party inventory. You might be each individual hero has his inventory. Maybe it's a list of from your shop. This is a shop and you're buying things and each shop has its own list of stuff that it carries and each of those is an inventory. So how do you get the inventory to the screen? Well, the reason this is called the equipment screen is because it has a specific purpose and we're going to go ahead and assume that every single one of these uh, classes that we create, equipment screen, shop screen, all those classes, we're going to code in them finding the inventory they want to find. We're just going to go ahead and assume that we're going to put that code in and everything else they can share, but that code and the visuals that you have put in manually, those are all going to be unique. It's only like two lines, so it's not a big deal. We don't have to we don't have to go out of our way to create to create some robust complex solution just to avoid writing two lines of code. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing. But in order to find the party inventory, we kind of need a party. So let's create a party, and this is important because we're creating a pseudo global. We need something that follows us around through the game world forever. So we can create this before we uh, before we even load the world. We create this, and then we have it follow us. And no matter where we go, no matter what we do, this party variable will always be available to us. This party object will always be right there beside us. And we can use it to manage our various party goods, like our list of heroes, our inventory, our gold. But we do have to make it into something we can easily find and that can follow us around. So we need to do a couple of things. The first is don't destroy on load. This means that when we change scenes, this won't go away. And that's uh, obviously an incredibly important thing if we want it to not go away. <laughs> we also need to be able to find our party. We don't want to search through the scene every single time for something named party. So public party party, but we need to make it static. That way, no matter what happens, we can go party.party .party and find it. So then we just set it up so that it, there, party equals this. Now, if you're going to do it like this, very, very blunt like this, you want to be careful to never have more than one party object. If you introduce your party object when you load the game world, you may end up introducing a lot of party objects. And you'll keep overriding the one that's got the most history with the most recent one. And that will be really wasteful. So um, this is something you can only do like this, but this easy way of doing it, if you understand, you only create one party object, and it's right at the beginning. Okay? Now that our party exists, all we need to do is put an inventory in it. So, what do we need to do? Public, static, no, 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 no don't worry about that. How do we get it? from here into our equipment screen. Well, the equipment screen, maybe maybe we need to add in a variable for our equipment screen where we drag it in and... No, that's not the... Yeah, equipment screen with drag and drop. That's actually really tough because the party exists before the equipment screen. So, well, how do we get the party inventory into the equipment screen when the party exists and the equipment screen doesn't and the equipment screen can't directly reference the party screen from the constructor window and you're overthinking it. I'm overthinking it on purpose, just to make you feel like you're overthinking it. I'm sick, sorry. <laughs> we have a much easier solution. What we're going to do is we are going to take the party, and we are going to create public static inventory inventory. Okay? And then here in start, we're going to say inventory 
equals game object dot get component inventory. So that means that when this starts up, it's immediately going to put a static inventory together for us. And we'll be able to find the party inventory from anywhere by typing party.inventory. Now, we can't easily drag and drop that into a field because they don't all exist at the same time. The party doesn't exist at the same time as the equipment screen when you're in the scene view. But we can go ahead and code for it. So if we go over to equipment screen here and start, oh, wait a minute, start, start, that's dangerous. What happens if party happens after equipment screen? Then we try and access the party from the equipment screen and it doesn't exist yet. That's right. You gotta be real careful when you are building stuff. If everything is in start, then you're gonna have to like carefully stage all of your stuff so that it operates in the right way. You have to make sure that party goes before equipment screen by using the script load order execution system. Ooh, ooh, no, no, no. This is a faster function. So if you need to if you need to actually set up globals, do it in awake. Because that way your all of your awake will go and that'll just set up all your global variables. And your starts happen and those go and access the global variables. It's pretty simple. Awake happens before start. Here in equipment screen, start. Okay, well we know that the party exists. So we can just say party.inventory. Okay, dot we need to make this actually work. We need this to pop into existence. Well, let's take a look at the inventory. We have to add one to our party, right? We have to put an inventory here, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's hit this little lock button and drop some crap in. There we go. Now you notice that we have a spot for an inventory display prefab. Hmm. All right. Seems like a weird place to put it, right? Well, the reason we put it there is so that whenever we have an inventory, we can have it have a different display than every, every, other thing, every other thing. Now, it's up to you whether you prefer that or the opposite. You could have it so that the equipment screen has the inventory display choice, and you could have different equipment screens. So if you have a shop, for example, you might have each shop have its own display preference, and so you have the shop in the Bahamas as like a floral or, you know, tropical thing, and a shop in Alaska has an icy thing, and you can do that. Or you can put it in the inventory like this, and in which case every inventory that gets called in will have a different thing, and that way you can tell the inventory of one hero from another. It's uh, it's not really important which way you do it is up to you. Uh, where you want to put your flexibility is 100% up to you. But since we've already done it this way, there's no reason to um, to back down. Let's go into the inventory here, and let's create a new function. Oh, one thing I need to mention, I switched over something. So the inventory display, this used to be a list of inventory items, but that's actually a bad way to do it. I must have been sick then too. Um, you want to pass in the object in question always. So if you have an inventory display, you always want to prime it with an inventory. And if you've got an inventory item display, you always want to prime it with an inventory item. The reason for that is because you can then do updates by marking them dirty, uh, which we haven't gotten to yet and we're not going to get to for a while, but I wanted you to know I changed this so we're not passing it a list of items, we're passing it an inventory. And that's actually really important, although minor. But we need to have a new function. How about public void uh, display? And we can say inventory display display equals instantiate inventory uh, display prefab. And of course we have to cast it. Always have to with cast it, there you are. Fortunately, the inventory display prefab knows how to put itself on the screen without us doing any additional work. We don't have to search for where it should go or arrange it to be in a specific spot, but we do have to prime it. And that means that this, uh, look at that, exact same comments, no, we don't want it in start anymore because we're going to have inventories that exist and we don't want them to all pop up on the screen at random. We only want them to pop up when we tell them to display. So over here in the equipment screen, what are we going to do? party.inventory.display Well, that was kind of easy. Shall we see if it works? It works! What a shocker! Now, our inventory display isn't the right size, but we can change the prefab on that inventory so that it is the right size pretty easily. 
And now we have our inventory on the left. How long has it been? Gosh, 10 minutes. Let's just quickly make this inventory the right size. Uh, inventory is by the way. Uh, adjust the just the inventory size and then we will go ahead and stop for the evening so click and click Bloop. Bloop. oh this is still locked that's what's going on you can see that this is linked to the middle here we've got a couple of options we can either link it to the left or link it to the right we can't link it to the middle because these are linked to the right so if our screen size changes you see how that happens? So the best way to do this is actually to link it to all corners like this and then adjust this out so that it bumps up against the side like so because the right side will remain locked and that means that as we reduce this, see? So that's the best way to make this inventory display work out well. And then we just hit apply to save our changes and then all of, everything that with links to that prefab should automatically update and there we go. Now it's the right size. But clicking on these things is doing nothing. Well, we're going to have to deal with that in the next episode. But I wanted to give you a quick little show uh, of how easy it is to do this. We really only needed to put in one line of code in the inventory screen to make it pull up the right inventory. And that's the key here. You don't want to create some huge, robust system for dragging and dropping things in scene view if you don't need one. If you're left with the option between writing a thousand lines of code to make scene view work or writing one line of code outside of scene view, the answer should be one line of code. Don't fear writing C code or C sharp code. Uh, if it's super simple stuff that is, you know, business logic as they call it, you know, if it's, if it's something that's specific to the one thing that this is supposed to do, don't create a whole system for that. You don't want to have like this massive, uh, you know, uh, 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 sorry, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm blanking here. Uh, Microsoft system for big companies. Enterprise, yeah. You don't want to build a big enterprise system. You don't want to like have a giant thing with lists and drag and drop interfaces and stuff. If it's only one line of code, just write the one line of code. Although we did have to write a couple lines of code so that the inventory knew how to instantiate itself, and a couple more lines of code to create a global party object so we could find the inventory. But that stuff we'll be reusing a lot. I hope this made sense. I'm on a lot of DayQuil.